Hello everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and today we're going to continue our skirtacular series with a pencil skirt based off of your measurements. Today we'll be using a serger. We've had a couple of requests but you can always use your regular machine so don't get deterred when you see the serger. You can always pull out your regular home machine. So let's get started by getting some measurements. So with this tutorial, you can have it super fitted, body hugging, or you can have a little bit of ease. Today we're going to do fitted, but with ease. I like to have a little bit of ease. And then you can add extra ease if you don't want it fitted at all. So we need to take some measurements. So the first thing you need to do is measure your waist. And this is your natural waist because these are pencil skirts are a little higher. So if you're not sure where that is, if you bend over to the side where it creases in, that is where your waist measurement needs to be taken. And then for your hips, you need to measure around the biggest part. So wherever the biggest part is, is the measurement you need to take for your hips. Then from your waist to your hips would be from the fullest part to that natural waist. You need that distance right there. And then how long you want it to be. Mine is below my knees. Um, so on that length, I think it was 26, 27, 27 inches is what I had for the length on mine. So those are the measurements we need. And then with those measurements, we're gonna do a little calculating and then we'll draft them onto our paper. So this is just plain old shipping paper. You can use wrapping paper, butcher block paper, anything that you have lying around. You can take printer paper and tape it together if you need to, just use whatever you have. So with your waist measurement, because we are going to plan on doing this on the fold of our fabric. And the reason why is because we want our left and our right side to match exactly. So if we have our pattern on the fold, then when you cut it out, you're cutting it out at one time. So they're going to match. So we have our fold indicated on our fabric. So I'm going or on our pattern because we're going to put it on the fold of our fabric. So here's our fold and we've got a straight line up here. We're going to do to start with. And I'm using Mr. Grouchy's wooden clappers as pattern weights right now. So let's get some measurements. Now these are just an example. You'll have a sheet that you can plug in your numbers. And I always encourage you to test this out on something that you may not really care about, but it does need to be a knit fabric. This is a knit pattern, so it needs to have at least 25 to 50% stretch, and this is across the grain. So, or if it's going the other way, just make sure when you are cutting it out that you are cutting with the stretch going the biggest part so that it stretches over your hips. So our waist measurement is 26. So if you take 26, and we are going to do fitted with ease. So if you're doing fitted with ease, we're going to add an inch. If you want to do it super body hugging, then you're going to subtract an inch and you could even subtract two inches if you want it really, really skin tight. Um, if you want it with lots of ease, then you're going to add anywhere from two to three inches. So we are doing fitted with ease. So we're going to take our waist 26 and add an inch to it. We get 27 and then we're going to divide it by two because we have a front piece and a back piece. So divide it by two, you get 13 and a half. And because we are working on the fold, this is half of our pattern piece. So one piece would be 13 and a half, but we're doing half of it. So again, divide it by two. Now I round up to the nearest half inch. So with that, it was 6.75. So we are going to use seven for our waist. So write that down. And then our hips at the fullest part was 37. And then we're going to again, add an inch for ease, divide it by two, because that's each piece is gonna be 19, and then divide it by two again, because we're working on the fold, and that is nine and a half. So nine and a half is going to be our fullest part. And then our measurement from our waist to our fullest part of the hip was also ironically nine and a half. So with that measurement though, we're going to add a half an inch for the top when we attach our waistband to it. So nine and a half, and then the half that gives us 10 inches. And then our desired length was 27. And then we're going to add for our hem, we are doing a double one inch hem. So that's two inches. And then that half inch for the top. So 27 plus two 
plus a half, we're at 29 and a half. All right, now that we have all our measurements, let's get to drafting. So now that we have our measurements, we're going to draft them onto our pattern. We have it indicated where our fold is and we have our start to start measuring from. So this is going to be our waist and then our length will be down here. So we can go ahead and mark our length. Our length is going to be 29 and a half. So 10, 20, 30, 29 and a half. So this will be our length. Let's go back up here to our waist, and we needed seven for our waist. Now from our waist to our hips, we had 10 inches. So right here. from our the side to the fullest part of our hips, that measurement that we figured up was nine and a half, right here. Now the bottom is going to be the same as your hips because we're gonna picture this going all the way down. So let's go ahead down here and mark that at nine and a half. Now at the bottom, we are going to taper in an inch. So we have our inch marked where we're gonna taper it in at the bottom. And then we also, on the front side only, since we are going to use this for front and back, I do want to indicate though, on the front, I'm going to taper it in a half inch just on the front so that um, when, you, when you're wearing it, it, it just balances the bottom out. Uh, so that is just going to be for the front taper, we're gonna do it at a half inch. And so again, you're gonna cut two, one for the front and one for the back. Now let's connect some dots. So here's our hip, here's our taper down here, and we're going to draw a straight line. So we're drawing a straight line, oops, from point to point. That marker, there we go. And then from this point to this point, we are going to do a gentle curve. Now you can use a dressmaker's curve. If you don't have this, it's okay. Again, you're just going to connect this to this with a gentle curve. Now we have our pattern all marked and we're going to cut it out and then go cut our fabric out. So I have my front piece and back piece cut out. I wanna show here, see where we tapered it down to the half inch. So this is just for the front piece, the back piece we kept straight. But I do wanna go ahead and mark my front piece so I don't forget which one is the front. So now I have two pieces and we're gonna go ahead and stitch the side seams. That way you can put it on and determine, mm, there's a little too much ease in the hips, so I need to taper it in a little bit more. We don't want pointy hips. So that's when you would take the opportunity to adjust anything before you go putting the hem or the waistband on. So now we're gonna to go to our serger and sew up those side seams. So before we serge our skirt together, we want to test our serge stitch and make sure it is balanced because different knits serge differently. This is a Liverpool and it is available, well, maybe not by now, depending on when you're watching it, on our website at $6.89 a yard. I love the bold print, but this is a Liverpool. So it has stretch one way, not the other. So this is where the stretch is. This is where very, very, very little stretch is. So we want to make sure that it is balanced. So we're going to, we have two layers since we are serging a front and a back together. And we are just going to stitch along. We 
want to make sure that it's not ripply. And we also want to make sure that we have that line along the top from our loopers and that there's nothing wonky. So it looks good. If you do have it super ripply, you want to change your differential feed. I've already adjusted mine. So I'm at a 1.5 right now so that I don't have that ripply. Now let's go ahead and surge. Now, when we are connecting the front and the back together, we are not going to use pins because I'm terrified of running over a pin with a serger because it will ruin it. So we are going to use clips. Now, if you're good at remembering to remove your pins, then you can pin it. But I like to take and use clips because sometimes I forget to remove the pins. All right, we have our clips. Now let's search. Now you can always use your regular machine. If you do your regular machine though, you need to make sure to use a stretch stitch or else you will be popping some stitches. Let's do the other side. have our front and our back connected. Go try it on. Make sure it fits fine in case you need to make adjustments. Now that we have our sides done and everything fits fine, we're going to go ahead and hem it. Now we are going to use a Fusey Knit Stabilizer. I've already cut it into one inch strips and this is going to be what we're going to help stabilize our hem and use it as a marker when we fold it up. It comes in black and white. So we're going to lay it right on the edge and fuse it in place. Now that we have it stabilized, we're going to go to our regular machine. We're going to fold it up that inch and fold it over again and then using a stretch stitch, stitch right along the edge. You can go ahead and put some clips in here to hold it in place or you can finger press it as you sew it on. Let's go sew. So we're going to show the difference first between a regular stitch and a stretch stitch. So if you were to just sew your knit fabric, and then go to put it on, this is what happens. Pop, 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 pop. Now a stretch stitch, there's 
two, mostly two on most machines. Um, one that looks like three little lines, and then one that I call Harry Potter's lightning bolt, um, his little scar. It looks like a zigzag line. That's the one I typically use. one will work. But now you can see that your seam will stretch and not pop. You can also use a zigzag stitch. Uh, this is a little closer though and you don't have, you're not using as much and it just lays a little better. And this is what it looks like on the other side. Now we have our hem already clipped in place and we're just going to stitch right along the edge. We are using a stretch stitch since this is a pencil skirt and you will have a little bit of need for the stretch. We are also using a ballpoint needle in our machine. Typically you'll be using either a ballpoint or a stretch needle depending on your knit. Sometimes the four way stretch like swim knit, a stretch needle works better. Whereas our Liverpool double brushed, the t-shirt knits, those do well with a ballpoint needle. So use your handy dandy stiletto to help feed it through. Remember, don't pull because you'll be breaking a needle. And back to where we started. Now we have a hem that stretches with our every movement. Now let's put a waistband on this so we can wear it out. So we have it hemmed, our sides are sewn, and now we need to do our waistband. There's a couple different methods you could do with your waistband. We're going to add a tutorial later for a yoga band that you can add on to it. But this one is just going to have a flat waistband. The elastic is inside. It's going to be attached straight to it. And so it'll lay inside and lay flat to you. So there's no seams, no lines, anything that you see, completely flat. So we need to take our waist measurement and subtract an inch, and then we're going to sew our elastic together. So I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and I'm going to attach the elastic. Now, before you go attaching this to your skirt, try it on and make sure it fits comfortably. Now, when we sew it to the skirt, the skirt has stretch already, so will this. So this should fit a little snug, but definitely not squeezing the life out of you. Try it on and then we'll attach it to the skirt. In order to attach our waistband, we wanna go ahead and make sure we have the four quadrants marked. You can always mark more, but we wanna make sure we have at least the four. So we have our side seam, which is indicated by the seam, our other side seam, we have the back, and then we have the front. Well, this is the front because we already marked it. And then the back. So let's put a clip right here in the middle. And since I just put the clip randomly on the front, let's make sure it's in the middle. Oh, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, so we have our front, back, side, side. Now with our elastic, 
we are going to finger press that open. This is going to be our back. That way I know when I go to put it on, where that seam is, is the back of my skirt. That way I have it indicated for me. We're gonna sew them right sides together. So let's find the other. And match this with this. Front and back. And then let's match them up with our skirt. So the back was right here. So again, we're going to do right sides together. Back with the back. Flip it. Side seam with the side seam. Line it up with the side seam. And middle and middle. So those are lined up. Now one other thing I want to do with this side seam where the seam is pressed over I want to make sure it's pressed to the side where my hem is. So on my hem, it is pressed over to this side, so I want to make sure that it stays that way the entire way up. And it is not so. Go ahead and flip that over to the other side. I don't know if this bothers anybody else, but when I buy a shirt, and the hem is the seam is twisted from the bottom to the top drives me crazy. So let's do the same with this one. Follow it along. Oh, and that one we guessed correctly. All right, so now we have it attached right sides together. And you may notice that you have a little bit more skirt fabric than you do elastic, and that is perfectly normal. When you go to serge them together, you're just going to gently stretch to match. So, stretch to match and sew. Right. So we have our foot down. We're going to pull so they line up together. And so. Make sure they stay lined together. If you need to put more clips, that's perfectly okay. And work from clip to clip. We went over where we had started and just sew off. Now we have our waistband attached. This is going to fold in and then we are going to put a tack 
right on the side seam to the elastic so it stays down just on each side seam. And then go try it on. So we need to do that tack on the side seam so we have it pulled out. Make sure everything's lined up. Let's go ahead and do one side. Just right through the side and the elastic. Right at the end of it. And since I have blue thread, I'm going to go to the blue side. Small little tack straight through. Now the other side. And make sure that seam is pressed over to the correct side. there you have it. Now that your tacks are put into place, we need to style this skirt up. Oh wait, I should go put it on first. Now you have an outfit ready for a nice date night or a night with the girls. You can make one too. Just go get your measurements and start drafting up your pattern. We appreciate you joining us for another Make It Monday. If you're interested in any of the items in this video, hopefully we still have this fabric available. If not, we'll have other ones perfect for you. You can use any knit. Remember, you want at least a 25 to 50% stretch. Again, this was a Liverpool 689, and there are several Liverpools on there, as well as double brush, swim knits. You can use any of those for your pencil skirt. Also, if you need something to help draft those hip lines, we do have this on there as well. This is perfect for arms, your hip line, adjusting your inseam, lots of great uses for this ruler. And then we also use the Fusy Knit, which stabilized our hem. We have it in white and black, and it has just enough stretch to help stabilize, but still give it some give. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to hit that bell on our YouTube channel so you get notified every time we put another video up. We'll see you next time on Make It Monday.